Lewis Austin was a black journalist, community leader, and social activist. He purchased the Carolina Times in Durham, North Carolina in 1927 and transformed it into an institution that aided African Americans in their fight for freedom and equality in North Carolina. In 1898, Lewis Austin was born in Enville, North Carolina. He grew up in a period when African Americans were denied basic civil liberties, including the right to vote. Throughout Austin's childhood, his father, William, taught him to stand up for his rights. As a young adult, Austin was enraged about racial discrimination. After high school, he attended the National Training School, now North Carolina Central University in Durham, North Carolina. After graduating, Austin worked for the North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company, a black-owned company based in Durham. By the 1920s, black America came to a fork in the road and had to choose whether to accommodate white societal viewpoints or oppose them. Austin chose to oppose them. Lewis Austin worked with the Standard Advertiser while at North Carolina Mutual. In 1927, Austin bought the paper with a loan from Durham's Black-Owned Mechanics and Farmers Bank. The name became the Carolina Times. Lewis Austin worked tirelessly to shape the Carolina Times into a vehicle for change for the black community. He used the paper to re-energize civil rights activism. African Americans who lived in Durham and the surrounding areas relied on their weekly subscription to inform them on issues that impacted the black community. The paper's motto was, the truth unbridled, because Austin's mission was to provide North Carolinians the unadulterated truth about contemporary situations and events. Austin's honest and straightforward approach gave him credibility and strong support in Durham and throughout the state. During a time period when Jim Crow laws ruled the South and white supremacy was prevalent, Austin understood that it was necessary to directly confront the problems blacks were facing and provided a voice for these problems. The Carolina Times was influential as it created an open dialogue amongst blacks in North Carolina and throughout the nation. Lewis Austin worked towards achieving racial equality for blacks, regardless of their socioeconomic status, by approaching discriminatory policies with a new confrontational strategy. Austin shared the political philosophies of Du Bois and Frederick Douglass, both of whom advocated protests as a political tool in the struggle for equal rights. He realized that confrontational and defiance not civility and accommodation were needed to break white supremacy stronghold in the South. Austin's outspoken editorials in the Carolina Times divulged African American inequalities and helped galvanize the African American community to focus on activism. Throughout the 1930s, Austin displayed his commitment to the black masses in Durham through his efforts to bring about social and political change in many different areas. He led voter campaigns, advocated for the integration of public schools, lobbied for equal pay for black teachers and equal funding for black schools, denounced police brutality and demanded equal employment opportunities for blacks. Austin's first major action in promoting equal opportunities in education in North Carolina occurred in 1933 when he joined with black lawyers Conrad Pearson and Cecil McCoy to back Thomas Hocutt in the lawsuit Hocutt v. Wilson to challenge University of North Carolina's decision to deny Hocutt's application for admission on the basis of his race. Austin displayed his commitment to legal action when he said, quote, if my actions will cause a race riot, you would better grease up your muskets for I am going back Monday to pursue this case, end quote. While Austin and the lawyers lost in court, the case was significant in the larger context because it marked a turning point in the struggle for equal rights and social injustice. The old order of the South would no longer go unchallenged by blacks in North Carolina. Courageous activists like Austin 
were committed to utilizing the judicial system to challenge racial inequalities. Hocutt versus Wilson laid the foundation for future political legal actions and served as the opening salvo in the NAACP's legal battle to overturn public education, ultimately culminating in the Brown versus Board of Education decision. The case also served as a point of entry for the NAACP in North Carolina. Lewis Austin believed that blacks could achieve better rights while working within the confines of the political system. Austin viewed political participation as a means to voice their concerns, and if the masses of the black community were politically engaged, they would be able to attain better rights. Austin constantly embraced community mobilization in both local and national politics. Beginning in the late 1920s, Austin worked to directly confront restrictions such as literacy tests that white supremacy imposed on blacks in order to keep them from voting. In 1932, Austin led a statewide nonpartisan political conference in Durham, which attempted to foster black interest in voting and address the difficulties blacks face in getting to the polls. Austin recognized that the Republican Party was no longer the black man's party and that for African Americans, the key to gaining influence in North Carolina and throughout the South was through the Democratic Party. In 1934, Austin displayed his newfound commitment to the Democratic Party when he and Frederick J. K. Watkins ran on the Democratic ticket and were elected Justices of the Peace in Durham. Throughout the country, the black press applauded their victory as a turning point for African Americans involved in politics. Quote, for the first time in the history of the South, two black men were elected to office on the Democratic ticket, end quote. Moreover, Austin's victory had important long-term significance. After Austin won, the local head of the Democratic Party tried to persuade him to back down. However, Austin remained adamant about serving in the office. Austin thus established a precedent for blacks serving as justices of the peace in Durham. While Austin did not obtain a powerful political position, his victory represented a success in blacks' first steps in politics. Another pivotal turning point in black political influence occurred in 1935 when Austin joined with Shepard and Spaulding to form the Durham Committee on Negro Affairs, known as the DCNA. The DCNA dedicated itself to improving black economic, social, and educational opportunities and served as a means for blacks to enter the political arena. The DCNA proved effective in registering blacks to vote. In 1928, there were only 50 black registered voters in Durham, and by 1939, there were 3,000 black voters in the city. When the United States entered World War II, Austin seized the opportunity and implemented the Double V campaign. Austin joined with other black newspapers in articulating this dual strategy in which blacks fought for victory abroad against the Axis powers while fighting for victory at home against the forces of white supremacy. The campaign revealed the hypocrisy in America's supposed war on democracy abroad and attack on the Nazis discriminatory ideology by publicizing racial oppression at home. Austin was the leading proponent of the Double V strategy in North Carolina and demanded that the end of racial segregation begin. One example Austin used to back the Double V campaign was how Americans condemned Japanese soldiers for committing atrocities against Americans, but they found nothing wrong with lynching African Americans. From the outset of World War II, Austin relentlessly attacked the government for, quote, all forms of discrimination and advanced for equal access for blacks in all branches of the armed forces, end quote. He expressed the absurdity of African Americans fighting for the right to put their lives at risk and defend their country. The American government 
concerned about losing support for the war on the domestic front, began to criticize attacks from black activists and the black press and sought to put an end to this double V campaign. Due to government pressure and surveillance, many black newspapers moderated their editorials. However, despite government pressure, Austin remained resolute in his support of the Double V campaign. According to Austin's daughter, an FBI agent came into the office of the Carolina Times, and Austin completely disregarded his concerns, and the FBI never returned. Even when faced with the challenges from the American government, Austin remained dedicated to the cause he believed in and refused to give in to pressure. The race riots of 1943, which erupted in over 40 cities, including Durham, also factored into the growing sentiment against black activists to tone down their criticisms. However, Austin remained determined to the double V strategy and instead used the violent uprisings to further his criticism by publicizing the harm that segregation was causing throughout the country. In June 1943, Austin expressed that the law of segregation was the root cause behind racial conflict in North Carolina. He believed that the riot in Durham represented the need for Durham to hire black police. While Austin utilized the race riots to demonstrate significant change that was necessary in Durham and America, he publicly condemned the blacks who participated in the riots for their lawless behavior. He urged blacks to pursue peaceful methods to end racial segregation. One method Austin advocated was telling every African American to write letters to their mayor, their governor, and their president and peacefully declare their frustrations through the power of words. Throughout the war, Austin taught other African Americans the importance of pursuing nonviolent methods when fighting segregation, such as publicly voicing their concerns instead. Austin, by implementing the Double V campaign, spurred a growing militant movement that would bear more fruit after the war. After World War II, Austin continued to directly confront issues blacks were facing and began to see some results from his hard work. In 1953, businessman R.N. Harris was elected the first black to the Durham City Council. Furthermore, after more than two decades of campaigning for desegregation in schools, the Brown versus Board of Education decision made Austin's dream to dismantle legal segregation of education a reality. Austin maintained his position in the forefront of the movement for justice and equal opportunity during the modern civil rights movement. He recognized the importance of joining with the younger generation of activists because they would be the face of the new movement. Throughout the 1960s, Austin saw the fruits of his lifetime of hard work. One significant event in the 1960s was when Thurgood Marshall was selected the first black on the United States Supreme Court. Austin had highlighted the importance of black engagement in the political system his entire life, and Marshall's appointment to one of the most prominent institutions in the United States government was a testament to Austin's beliefs that blacks could achieve power in the political system. The Carolina Times printed that, quote, the United States Supreme Court opened historic term October 2nd with the swearing in of the first Negro justice in its 178th year history, end quote. He used a new approach to civil rights in Durham, incorporating lower and middle class blacks in the fight. Austin's unusual strategy of advocating for the majority of blacks to have a voice in the society succeeded in galvanizing a broader segment of the black community in Durham to act for social change and help lay the groundwork for the modern day civil rights movement in the late 1950s and 60s. 
His strategies, which were once considered too radical by his peers, allowed Austin to maintain his influence in Durham as well as into the 50s and 60s. In so doing, Austin created a lasting impact on far more than just Durham, North Carolina. Austin continued to advocate for civil rights causes until he died in 1971. During Lewis Austin's 44 years as editor of the Carolina Times, he shaped it into an institution that gave black people a place to voice their concerns and a conduit to be heard.